This is the second video of the video series that talk about the derivative and shape of graph. In this video, we will introduce the relative maxima, relative minima and use, explain them using a graph and then look at the definition of the critical point and an example where we find the critical points of the given function. Okay, let's look at the definition of absolute maximum. Okay, so we have a function f defined on an interval i and this c is a number in that interval. Okay, then we call fc is absolute maximum of f on i if fc is greater than or equal to fx for all x in i. Okay, that means fc is the highest value attained by function, this function inside the interval. Okay, if you look at a real life example, think there are several sections of classes taking the same subject and so this absolute maximum is the student who take the highest score for out of all the classes. Then we say fc is an absolute minimum of on i if fc is less than or equal to fx for all x in i. So that means fc is the minimum value attained by the function inside this interval. Again, if you look at the example where we have several classes taking the same subject, this is the student who get lower score out of all the classes. Absolute maximums and absolute minimum are called extreme values or absolute extrema. Okay, so they are known as together we call them minimums and maximums together extreme values okay or absolute extrema now we look at relative extrema if there is an interval containing c on which fc is a maximum then fc is called the relative maximum of f so this means fc is a maximum compared to values around him okay so if we go back to that example with several sections taking the same course these absolute sorry these relative maximums are the student who caused highest highest mark in each section okay so each section there is a student taking the highest mark those are absolute, relative maximums absolute is the one who take highest score out of all the classes If there is an interval containing C on which Fc is a minimum, then Fc is called a relative minimum. Again here, if we go back to that example, so in each class there is a student taking the minimum score, no? So each class student who take the minimum score become a relative minimum. Okay, so here Fc is a minimum compared to values around him. Okay. Let's look at a graph and try to identify absolute and relative extremes in this graph. Okay, so if you look at here, highest point is of the graph, it's like a highest point is the absolute maximum. Okay, and the lowest point is a absolute minimum. Okay, then if I look at this B, if I compare him with values around him, he's the highest. No. It values it doesn't matter how close if I can find a, even a small interval around him he is the highest is a relative maximum so if you look at B I can find this interval around him a small interval he is the highest value in that interval no? so it's a relative maximum also the highest one is a relative maximum because I can think of all interval in this case no? because he's, there is an interval that means simply all interval where he is the highest so it's also a, a relative maximum okay if you look at that example with sections highest score student will be among the relative highest guys no okay then this one is compared to values around him is the minimum no so he is a relative minimum Again, this one, if I consider values around him, he is a minimum. Okay, so, he is a relative 
meaning. So, if I look at E, E is a minimum com compared to values around. So, he is a relative minimum and this absolute minimum is also a minimum compared to values around him. No? So, he is also a relative minimum. So, here sorry, A is the absolute minimum, D is the absolute maximum, B is a relative maximum, uh, D is a relative maximum, then A is a relative minimum, C is a relative minimum, E is a relative minimum. Okay, if you think this as a mountain range, each mountain top is a relative maximum. Okay, then the highest out of those uh, top mountain tops is the absolute maximum. Then valleys are relative minimums. No? Let F be defined at C. If the derivative at C is 0 or if, it, if the derivative is undefined at C, then we call this C a critical number. Okay, so the function have to be defined at C and derivative have to be either 0 or undefined at C. Okay, then C is a critical number. Okay, if C is a critical number, point with Cartesian coordinates C, F, C on the graph is called a critical point. Okay. So now let's look at steps we have to follow to find critical numbers, okay? So first you have to find the derivative and then see whether the derivative is 0, 0, okay? So to find the points where derivative is 0, you have to set derivative to 0 and solve for x, no? Solution gives the critical numbers. Those are the ones where derivative is 0. Okay, then we have to look for the points where function is defined but derivative is not defined. Okay, one way to find them is looking at the places setting the if the derivative has a denominator, you can set the denominator to 0 and solve for the x. Okay, so those also will give you. Uh, critical points but you have to make sure to check whether the function is defined at that point okay because function have to define at that point okay other sometimes you might have to also use the definition of the derivative to check whether the derivative is defined at that point find the critical numbers of fx equals cube root of x divided by 1 minus x. So we are asked to find the critical numbers of this one. So first step is to find the derivative. Okay. So we our given original function is this and we are going to find the derivative. So this is a quotient. So we can use the quotient rule. So according to the quotient rule, I differentiate the numerator multiplied by denominator minus numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Everything I everything I divide by denominator raised to power two. Okay. So here this is a x cube. I can write x x to the one over three. So here for that one I can use the power rule. Okay, so I bring down the 1 over 3 and then x to the 1 third minus 1 is a negative 2 third. I can make it positive by writing in a denominator like this. Okay, so this 1 over this term comes from the derivative of cube root of x. Then this original numerator times the denominator. Here I can use the different rule and so I can differentiate this and minus x separately. When I differentiate the minus x, I get a minus 1. That minus and this minus make positive here. Okay. So the derivative this is minus 1. Okay. So it make it a positive. Now taking here in the numerator, 
here I can take the common denominator at these two terms okay so that will make this a 3x when I multiply by this guy okay and denominator I can write it as this guy over 1 okay next I can flip this and multiply so I get 1 plus 2x over this in the denominator okay because I can this I can flip this one and multiply by it okay so derivative is this expression okay, so this is our derivative now we have to go and find critical numbers okay so first look for the critical number where that makes a derivative 0 okay so for that we set the derivative to 0 and solve the equation for x so this is my derivative I'm setting it to 0 now when I cos multiply these things times 0 becomes 0 so I can just simply set the numerator to 0 and I will have this condition x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 1 because those value in the denominator 0 so then I take this to the other side and divide by 2 so I get x equal to minus half and definitely at x equals minus half function is defined no because derivative is defined at 0 definitely function is also defined at x equals negative half so x equals negative half is a critical number okay now okay now we have to go and find the points where derivative is undefined okay definitely setting the denominator to 0 will give some of those okay so here I set the denominator to 0 and solve for x okay so if denominator is 0 if I get x equals 0 then denominator is 0 now also if x equal to 1 it's 0 so x equals 1 and x equals 0 are candidate for the critical points okay but if you look at x equals 1 then if you look the original function it's undefined at x equals 1 now because the denominator of the original be function becomes 0 so x equal 1 function is not defined okay so i cannot use x equals 1 as a critical point but x equals 0 the original function is defined okay so because of original function is defined at x equals 0 x equals 0 is a critical number okay so my critical numbers are negative half and 0 okay so this is the original function you can see when x equal 1 denominator becomes 0 for this guy that's why I cannot take x equal 1 no but x equal 0 function is defined no function is also 0.